All right. Hope the sounds are all right with this one. Um, doing a review of Breaking Bad season three, episode thirteen, and this is the season finale. So um, I have been looking forward to watching this episode. Um, the last one was pretty suspenseful, I guess. No, not suspenseful. It left me. I guess it was suspenseful. That should have been the season finale, not this one. But this one is pretty good. So, man, Pinkman has got Mr. White in a hell of a situation here. Um, by him not being able to control himself and going after these two guys after that Hollywood meeting between him and the big boss. Um, I need to cut my hair again. But yeah, um, after after that, after that happens, now it's sad to say. Without that decision, they don't have this episode, which is like, to me, it's like, damn. But I, I'm torn because I like the direction they took with that information. They they lead you along this little. This little, this little chase, cat and mouse type thing, where it's happened so many times before. You know, you know what's coming. Somebody's gonna get beat. Somebody's gonna get interrogated. Somebody's gonna give up. Somebody's gonna get killed. You know all that, but everything's been jumbled up around. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't know for sure if the if they bring back they bring back the um, the assistant from from earlier when Walt first got to the new facility him he brought back him and he's very passive so he, he seems to roll right into it but he tries to kind of grow a backbone um when the big boss asks him do you think you can do this yourself he's like oh most definitely so he kind of grows a backbone there um well Walt has this plan all along oh, man but he's dealing with two serious dudes here the hitman and, and uh the big boss's personal uh, I guess bodyguard or, or I don't know I don't know what their positions are <laughs> but these are two two guys or the kids say two shooters so these two guys are um, on his case they're following them they're watching them all the time they got his phone even Sal which I've started watching Better Saul, Better Call Saul I think I've almost done watching their first episode I, I, I got sidetracked with something else so I come back to it but um so this episode, you're going to see Pinkman, you're going to see, you, you see Pinkman, you'll see Mr. White, you'll see uh, Hitman, and Hitman, uh, uh, Big Guy, and that's pretty much, that, those are pretty much the only characters you'll see in this one. Oh yeah, and, and the sister from early, he comes back, you, you'll see him, but I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of the words to put it. It's a way more mellower episode than the one the one previous because, like I said, you, you pretty much know what's going to happen. So, usually you would think, I'm trying to think, but but already Mister the, the, the beauty of it is, Mister White's character is already um, kind of doing unex well not kind of he's doing unexpected things. You don't expect that character to be to be behaving in that way. At least I didn't. So with that in the mix. Now you're, you're gonna start. I was gonna. I started to like guess. Actually, I didn't guess. I was actually um, pretty into the episode, to, to be honest with you. Saying, and I know I just said it was. It was. Well, it is. It is mellower considering. It is mellower when compared to that to the previous episode. So that I that I'm gonna stand by. But it's not. It's not a terribly. It's not a terribly dull episode overall. Just saying in comparison to, to the last one. That makes sense. So you're waiting for somebody to get beat up. Nobody actually gets beat. Which is which is a great a great thing because it shows that the big boss has actually been in control the whole time. He knows how to pick his employees, right? He picks people who genuinely want to do it or who are genuinely scared. Because that, that's the way he, he, he he decides to rule. So he has some people in there who, like, I like doing this job. I get paid well. No big deal. That's the hitman and other hitman. 
and Mr. White and and the uh, the Mr. White and the uh, assistant both are very timid people. So you don't have to do too much. You don't have to press them too hard in order to get them to do what you want. So it, it should make his life fairly easy. But like I said, Mr. White's character isn't acting like that. He's acting a little, a little funny, new, brand new, if you will. So that's giving him sort of a headache. And I think they try to try to illustrate that with a small with a small scene inside the movie. They try to illustrate that. Um, now. They show some. They show us flashback of when Mr. White bought, first bought the house with his wife. She's pregnant with their first kid. Um, they show the hitman spending time with his uh, granddaughter. I, I guess they're. Well, I shouldn't have put both those together. They're two different. They probably, you, of course, they're used to illustrate two different things. So the one I understand the best is is probably the hitman. They show him. They show. They show that to try and make him seem human. But he doesn't do anything to uh, to make me think of otherwise. He doesn't do anything to make me think, oh, this guy's not even human. He's such an animal. It's like he's been calm and cool the whole time. I really haven't even seen his character yell. Um, now, why would they show Mr. and Mr. And Mrs. White when they first bought the house? I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're doing that in order to... To get, I don't know, maybe to give you doing that to just give you more background in in their in their when their when their relationship was not necessarily in his infancy, but early on in the relationship. Maybe they're doing that to, I don't know. I didn't get I didn't get it why they had that flashback. Maybe I'm not paying paying enough attention. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, Mr. White actually. I don't. I don't know if he was acting or if he was serious because. He starts breaking down. I'm gonna give up pigment. He was acting because he's. I'm gonna break down. He's breaking down. I'm about to cry. I'll give you pigment. Here's pigment. Please take pigment. Don't kill me. Please, no, no, no. I don't want this. And he tells me, "Do it. You gotta do it. Do it. Do it. Do it." He wants to get the whole time. Pigment's been in town, but they told. But the lawyer's given the hitman an address outside of outside of the state, outside of the state to get him off the trail a little bit, and. Uh, Pigman's found the address where the assistant lives, so they're gonna. He says he's gonna use it as leverage, but it's gonna keep both of them alive. They're gonna kill. They're gonna have to kill that guy to keep both of them alive. And he's such a submissive guy, such a sweetheart. I don't. I don't know how he got tied up in it. To be honest with you, he, he gave some bullshit story about um, only doing it to to make sure he can give the best quality to people. Maybe he has a. Maybe he has a. Uh, I think he does. I think he. I think he said something along those lines that he has somebody in his family who's using drugs and he wants them to have a cleaner product or something. Like, some weird. No, but I think that's not weird because I feel like you would do anything to save a loved one. Most people would. Well, some people would go to extremes, even if it's harming them. They would want them to still be happy or make them. Or they don't want to push them away. They still want them to be around them. So even if it's harming, I'm going to give it to you. I'm not that way. I'm not that way. If it's harming you and you keep doing it, then I'm just going to cut ties with you. I know that's a... Especially... I know that's... Uh, that would be hard for a lot of people to do. But it's like, you can't just turn your back on somebody when they're at their worst. You got to be there. If you really care for them, you got to be there even when they're at their worst. Which is like... I get you. I get you. But people... I'm entitled to get fed up. Now, I'm getting too personal now. But I, but I, I think... A person is entitled to get fed up with somebody's actions and decide not to uh, not to deal with them anymore. I think that's hey, it all depends on what transpired and also what uh, what 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 transpired and how it affects that individual. Those two, those two individuals, because like I like I've said before, two people are everybody's an individual. So what's normal to me is not normal to you. So if somebody does something that rubs me the wrong way, it might not rub you the wrong way. But that's not the point. It rubbed me the wrong way. So I have to cut ties with you. But that's too much of a personal. But I'm just saying how they're they're masterful. They're being very they're very masterful at tying everything in together and making a story. Now, although this was a weaker episode, I feel than the last episode. 
it, 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 I'll give it, I'll give it this. I'll give it a gold star for this. It, it, it leaves you wanting more. You're asking a lot of questions. That's all I'll say.